I think the two things which are happening with Islamophobia, one is that Islamophobia is becoming more and more established as part of political discourse and political debate, part of the way in which I think European societies are having to deal with the rise of the right wing in various different countries. And the thing with the right wing, the extreme right, in most of these countries now, that is being driven by Islamophobia or co concern about um, Muslim presence as Muslims as a threat to the cultural integration of those societies. So one of the biggest challenges is how not to allow Islamophobia to become normalized as part of the European everyday experience. And those are very, very serious challenges right now. Um, so that's, I think, the biggest thing. And in that, you can see in, this is a phenomenon not just in Spain or in France or Britain, but it's actually a global phenomenon in a way within Europe itself. So I think the real issue is this. Will the European Union define itself as being the place of Islamophobia? And I think that has a number of implications for the idea and the project of what kind of European Union is going to emerge post-Brexit, post this crisis of the extreme right, which is really trying to redefine the European Union as a place of um, white privilege rather than a place of multicultural um, society where you can have diversity and difference and so those are the kind of issues that I think are really the key here. Oh, the first recommendation is don't be Islamophobic. <laughs> That's the easiest one to do. But the real issue really is how do we stop being Islamophobic? I think one of the things we need to do is stop thinking of Islamophobia as simply being limited to uh, extreme neo-Nazi groups or things like that. The real threat for Islamophobia is that, like I said, how it becomes normalized. And I think this is really the issue that needs to be tackled. That, in a way, are, is Europe's imagination large enough to imagine a future for itself which isn't based on the exclusion and repression of various kinds of minorities, including Muslims as a minority? How we combat that, I think, is partly through the kind of work of organization, about building coalitions, and to constantly challenge the narrative which tries and describe the um, Islamophobia as something normal or necessary. I think the second part is that I think we need to take a very close look at the various counter ex of, um, extremism projects that have been put in place in all of Europe. Especially, and here I think countries which have had to deal with domestic terrorism for many decades can actually play a better role, a more critical role, that in a sense that how we can safeguard civil um, rights and civil liberties and maintain national security. I think we should be very, very cautious that the securocrats are driving the agenda which is reinstitutionalizing Islamophobia and undermining civil rights. So I think these are political solutions and political conflicts and they require a certain awareness and to see the issue of Islamophobia not as just affecting Muslims but really talking about the relationship between state and citizen. I think the internet now is playing a role of almost being a kind of a, um, a sort of a political party. And what I mean by it is in a Gramscian sense that you know you have a sense where a lot of the information, a lot of opinion now is forged in the internet. So in a way the internet has taken over from the mass media in many ways, the traditional media. And I think it's very, very important that we start introducing uh, methods of reading and understanding the internet. And this is also a job for the universities and the, uh, to think about the role of the universities. Once upon a time, knowledge was very, information was very, very easy, very, very difficult to get. You had to, you know, if you look at the old university library, you had to go through the card catalog, it was very difficult. But once you got that information, you knew that information had gone through certain checks and it was reliable. Now you can Google or Wikipedia anything. So information to get is very, very easy to get information. What is more difficult is critical analysis. It's being able to read and sort this information out. And I think the universities and other kind of pedagogic institutions need to teach their populations how to read, how to be critical, rather than just simply how to get information. 
information is on the, ta on the tap, but critical thinking is now really, really difficult. And that, I think, is a really important part, because without that, you will not be able to filter the things that you get from the internet. And it's that skill of filtering which is really, really important.